it's a floating head. Ooh, because today we're going to take a look at the Power Rangers plug and play. And you can see it has two buttons, A and B, your red light indicator when it's on. On off switch, your menu button, which is also a pause button, runs on four AA batteries. Kids, let your parents put them in because you can handle that, at least according to the disclaimer at the bottom. And it's a little disturbing looking. I mean, it almost looks like a Power Rangers lollipop. It is your standard plug and play with the single audio, single video AV out thing going on. Anyway, let's go ahead and take the Power Rangers plug and play, pop it in my TV, see how it holds up today. Let's go to the game. The Power Rangers plug and play was released by Jack Pacific and carries the copyright year of 2006. It would be the first of many Power Ranger plug and play units that would follow later. This plug and play unit is based on the Power Rangers SPD TV show in which the Power Rangers are basically intergalactic policemen. Five of Emperor Groom's henchmen are on the loose, and now it's up to the Power Rangers to capture them. The Power Rangers plug and play contains an action game for one player only with three modes of difficulty with the default difficulty set on easy. While the back of the packaging states that this contains five games, in actuality it's a single game split into five sections for each of the five rangers. At the beginning of the game you select one of the rangers to go after one of the escaped bad guys. No matter which ranger you pick, the game plays roughly the same. The game starts as a typical action game where one button attacks and the other jumps. Double pressing to the left or the right will cause your character to run in that direction. You can also press up an attack to fire your gun or down an attack to do a special attack, but most of the time you're better off simply wailing away on the action button, pulling off one automatic combo after another. You also have a certain number of special attacks which you can use by pushing both buttons that will wipe out all the regular enemies on the screen. There are icons that look like small clouds of dust that you can gather. If you fill up your icon bar, you will upgrade your ranger. And if you do it a second time while upgraded and press both buttons together, you will upgrade to an even more powerful form. However, while upgraded, you are constantly losing special power and you need to collect more of the little clouds of dust to continue in your upgraded form. In addition to the clouds of dust icon, you can pick up extra special attacks, extra lives, and extra health. Eventually, you'll reach a vehicle stage where your main action button fires ahead of you while the other button attacks enemies to the side of you. These types of stages go back and forth until it's finally time to face the main bad guy in gigantic form. But before you do, you'll ride your vehicle Zord in a level where you can't attack, so you simply have to avoid getting damaged as you progress through the level. However, you can push enemies into the sides of walls, which can be satisfying. When the level finally ends, you join the other Power Rangers, form Voltron, excuse me, I mean the Megazord, and attack the bad guy with punches and sword attacks until you're powered up enough to throw a Street Fighter 2 style fireball to defeat your enemy and evidently turn them into a trading card. After beating the boss, you can go back to the menu screen and select another ranger if you wish. The game does not save and completing all five levels doesn't do anything special. Each of the five ranger levels can contain different settings and the rangers themselves attack in mildly different ways and you are going after different bad guys in each level, but for the most part, all five ranger levels play mostly the same. Graphically speaking, I thought the game looked decent and reminded me of a lower grade 16-bit game. The same can be said for the music and sound effects as well. Nothing blew me away, but it did get the job done. Family friendly wise, this game was rated E10 and up for ages 10 and up due to cartoon violence. At the time my research on eBay, the Power Rangers plug and play unit was going for about $8 to $10 including shipping. However, if you found this in the wild, such as at a garage sale or a thrift store, my guess is it would cost you $5 or less. So what did I think of the Power Rangers plug and play? Well, it's not the greatest and it reminds me of the Fantastic Four plug and play, which I just reviewed in episode 272. However, I will say I enjoyed this more than the Fantastic Four plug and play due to the variety of levels. I like how the game showed you how to control your character and also how it continuously switched up the action between the action scenes, vehicle scenes, and the final Megazord battles. It's not a long game and it is rather easy, especially on the easiest level, and I'm guessing most gamers could get through all five levels in about an hour to an hour and a half. However, I still got some enjoyment out of this plug and play. 
So where am I going to rank the Power Rangers plug and play? Well, like I said, I did like it more than the Fantastic Four plug and play, which I have ranked at the 10 position, but I would rather play Wheel of Fortune at the 9 position. So out of the 14 plug and play units I've reviewed so far, the Power Rangers plug and play is going to morph into the number 10 position. The Power Rangers plug and play is not the greatest, but you can get a little fun out of it. At this time, I'd like to thank Atari.io forum member JMJustin6 for trading with me so I could get this plug and play to review today. Thank you, Justin. I'd really appreciate it if you would click the like and subscribe buttons. I'd also appreciate it if you decided to support the show on Patreon. Just go to patreon.com slash gamer for more information. You can also follow me on both the Facebook or the Twitter. Thank you for giving me a little part of your day and I look forward to seeing you next time on the next episode of the Nosewear Gamer. Take care and morph carefully.